Starting out with our Cerberus Sulfur Hounds. So we've got the guy with the pose, he's got his uh, Danny DeVito, so anyway I started blasting going on. we got our parts divided up for easy painting. So we got the backpack, head, body, and then the hound uh, mounted to the base. We're going to get the rest of these parts blacked out and then we're going to start on our white. So for the black I just used my black surface primer from Vallejo. Cheap way to get blacks on there without wasting all your black acrylic paint. For the whites, I'm going to use this uh, Bombay white India ink. I got my reference here in the background, but it looks like it's the armor plates along the neck, the shoulders, the little bit of a snout that it has, and then these little plates on the back. Now I already went ahead and glued on the uh, satchels because those would normally shadow an area like that. I'm going to put my white on to get pretty stark. And I'm not worried about any sort of overspraying when I'm applying this because we're going to go back and paint all that. So. Making sure that these undersides get a little bit of white on them. Just so that red comes through, translates. Reinforcing that white, letting it dry with some air. And now I'm going to do the underside of these plates since they're right next to it. Go with the extreme kind of highlight, moving through the neck plates here. Little agitations, as you can see my finger moving on the screen of the trigger for the airbrush. And then make sure I kind of blow everything out. And then the bridge of the nose. Red. Now look at this helmet here. Doesn't look. Let me see if I can get it to focus on that. There we go. Whoop, for a second. I think the little armor plate in the front of the helmet is going to be red. It's got kind of a flourish to it, so it's probably gold. But I want the inside of this to be red for his helmet. So I'm going to come in here and aim at the top middle of his head. And brighten it up. There we go. Alright, so now we'll have a nice red top helmet. His body is the cloak area, so this uh, ring of cloth around, and then the uh, the insides of the cloak the, are, are the tan color. The outsides, the backsides are the red. So we're going to Head in here and he's got some armor plates. Shoulder pads, which are being shown as silver on the Raiders. It could be a good way to differentiate the Raiders and the Sulfhounds. So we're going to do that. We're going to paint these shoulder pads, this back armor piece, and then that. Now I've got to get the folds of the cloth down here. Pulling my highlights so it's brightest in the center here. And then just these kind of folds right here on the inside of the leg. Alright, and then that'll be the basis. Let me check their pants. Their pants are black. They got some more armor on the center there. Their torsos. It looks like it is silver. So I think we're set 
for our white block in our color. We'll move on to our red. We're going to use Contrast Blood Angels Red on all of our white areas through our airbrush. Put my towel down here so you guys can see. The little test spray, and we're just going to hit all our armor panels evenly. You see any sort of spottiness that we had with our airbrush layers all blended out. Contrast go through the airbrush real nice. And they help kind of glaze in those layers. Our black areas are getting nice and rich and more of that mahogany tone. And the white is getting that really pop saturated Blood Angels red, which makes a really good Mars red. Just making sure that all the little nooks and crannies of the parts that I want to be red are painted. Again, not too concerned with any sort of overdue color wise. But this is consistent for this arm. This army has a very iconic looking red that we're trying to maintain throughout all the units no matter what. important to get the inside of this collar too because you can see it. Clear the clogs. Keep going. We're going to move on to our yellow ink here in just a second. Alright, and that's all those parts red, so bulk of the work done just like that. Moving on to our yellow overcoat through the airbrush. This is just to warm up our reds. Make sure they're nice and punchy and warm. This is kind of just a small light coat over all our colors. Quick and easy. No reason to skip it. It really is visible in an army sense. It's a small change on a single figure, but if you have 40 of these guys next to 40 other ones that don't have yellow on them. That person's is going to be nice and washed out, not uh, not punchy like it is here. Our next color we're going to put through the airbrush is our Vallejo Model Air Steel. Got some loaded up here. I'm going to move this horse out of the way. Dog. Hound. And then just hit this airbrush. Not that hard with our steel. Just to save a little bit of time. Once this dries, we're gonna hit it with a wash, but before we do that, we need to take and hand paint all the steel areas on our rider and on our hound. So we're looking at a lot, a lot of metal work on this guy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Again, we're using the model air steel for that because it coats really nicely. And I'm gonna be using my reference heavily to make sure I'm getting the right areas in the steel. And I'll probably even paint the areas that are gold um, and then just coat over them for coverage. Before I do that though, I want to hit these with a matte varnish. So I'm taking my army painter 
Matte varnish, gonna hit them, make sure that I avoid pooling or tiding with my Vallejo Air model, or yeah, Vallejo, model Air steel, um, because it, it likes to run through porous surfaces and after we've done one, two, three, four airbrush coats, the, the surface can get pretty porous and it likes to pull pigments into it. So this will prevent that. Just an example for you guys of how the steel coats like butter. Recommend if you're going to be painting lots of metal, pick you up some of this stuff. You won't regret it. Ooh, buddy, that is a long step. I think uh, about an hour and a half to get all those silvers on. Though I did have a customer come in, so I don't know if it really took that long. So these are all the areas that have got silver. I'm going to go ahead and drop my black wash on there. I was a little bit careful on the intersections here since we did have a black base and there is a lot of uh, kind of clear area so I don't have to put a lot of black over in these areas um, like with the hoses and things like that the um, the red is a lot easier to cover than the silver is though I'm you know still overages here and there to to shore up with with new colors but our black wash will be of course the nun oil from Citadel and I like to use a liner when washing so liners got your long bristles get it wet to begin with to protect our ferrule and then go in and go heavy go super heavy let it do its job see how all of it's just kind of running down into the cracks of the sort of spinal rib cage thing that he's got I'm going to hit everything that I have just painted silver along with the backpack that we airbrushed earlier. And I will get back with you. So I made a boo-boo. This is actually one of the horse mounts for the Raiders, not the Sulphur Hound. So I'm going to go back and do all the steps on the Sulphur Hound so that from here forward we're working on the correct model. And I will just update this one in the next video because I am going to paint a raider as well. And just like that, we have morphed our uh, raider into a uh, hound. <laughs> um, so from here, we're going to start blocking in our blacks. I've started just a little bit here as an example. So any of the cloth areas, not the bags, the bags are going to be uh, bag color. Um, just to help with dictating where the gold should be um, you know we have two red areas here but this little uh, trim should be gold and it'll help uh, helps me um, figure out where I need to put some items so I'll go ahead it's, and it's the next really biggest step is putting in all the blacks uh, same thing with this guy he's gonna have like a glove and his pants are gonna be black so we'll get those uh, knocked in the helmet's got some <coughs> some hoses on it and we will be back we got our blacks done so it is time to use our liquid gold rich gold from vallejo and just so you can see where we're at progress wise we're gonna lay in our gold we're just putting in base colors for now making sure and everything's getting sort of cleaned up through each step and then we'll go back and address highlighting and the like and I realized that there's one little hose on this backpack I'm gonna get that bottom hose all right so with the liquid gold I like to use um, just cheap small synthetic brushes because it is really rough on brushes. It's very thick. It's got sort of a resin base. I should say it has a resin base. We're gonna hit everything that we can see in our reference that is gold. Now his trim around here, all this trim around here is gold. Use the side of the brush and just real carefully touch 
Synthetics will hook, so you can use like the outside of that hook, the bevel, as a way to edge things. See, I've clipped like a little bitty bolt that's sticking up there. But that's fine. So I can just clip the other ones, and then he has little gold rivets in this. Ooh, I hold my breath. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do all the trim areas around here, um, and then on the face mask, and I will I will show that step when I am done. Now, while you're working, every so often, I like to take my brush and just dip it into my alcohol and agitate it back and forth just to clean it off. And then you can see there's still like a decent amount of gold stuck to it as the brush came out that helps lay, lengthen the life of span of your brush um, but really it's going to turn into a stick after a while finished up our gold layers and now i'm going to move on to tans and browns um, so for our tan which will be our satchels things like that the uh, places that we're going to use the our contrast paint are snake by leather <clears throat> we're going to paint first in this Terran khaki and then put on so these these larger areas since I don't really want to uh, wash those we're gonna use a beastie brown let me see if I can find the bottle beastie brown is right in front of me um, so areas like the saddle that are gonna be a large area we're gonna go ahead and just coat with the beastie brown um, for our golds I did the little filigree on the pistols, the line around uh, his. I need to go back and get the lines around the shoulder pads. Missed that. Looking through the camera, I noticed it. And then here, just the filigree type elements on the face shield. And then for this guy, the gold on each little knob on the end and then the little tank at the bottom we did full gold as well the Terran khaki is going to coat fairly thin so I put it on thick and just move it around so I don't have to reload constantly kind of a cheat I always say paint the right way until you know when to use the wrong way. So you can see how thin that coat is. There's still some stuff showing through. And so we're going to paint here. We're going to paint the skull. So there's some exposed skull up here. Um, and then these pouches here, get some little reference streaks for my, my own sanity. Know what I need to paint. Here, I'm gonna get this strap there. There. Then, whoop, did I see something? I thought I saw something. I know I need to hit this little thing with wash. Missed that. Um, inside of the cloaks here. And then he's got some pouches. So some of these areas are going to get washed and some aren't. So we're just marking out everything that's getting painted that color. And then there's always... A little hidden pouch back here. So I'll get those knocked in and then we'll be ready for our contrast. So next we want to use the snake bite leather contrast on our bags and straps. So for that I'll get out my liner brush And we go heavy with the contrast, just like we go heavy with the washes. We don't want things to get streaky. We want to make sure we can control the pigment by pushing it around when it's heavy. 
So should look like that bag when you're done. We're gonna use skeleton horde just on the skull of this guy. You can see here's his saddlebags. I guess these are saddlebags. All contrast up the straps, looking like worn leather. There's uh, the skull here. Gonna get in with this horde. Contrast up. Here in a minute, we're gonna start putting in uh, some of our uh, Reichlin flesh shade on the gold areas. So here we have our Reichlin flesh shade. Shake it up. Some of these washes you need to shake up because the pigment kind of settles to the bottom. Plus, it helps for it to all gather in the little dropper tongue, pot tongue. So, just all over our gold areas here. All these, and again, putting it on heavy, letting it settle into the cracks. We're gonna work all these areas and be right back. I'm going in and adding a little bit of uh, black on the edges here just to wash in and change up the way the uh, the shoulder pad because the Reichlin flesh shade isn't dark enough. Now we're going to take our steel that we already have on the palette up here. And we're going to do a controlled dry brush since we've got all our washes and everything on our metal just to finish out the metals. So anywhere that would have kind of a natural highlight go fairly heavy with the the dry brush and be careful not to hit any of your areas that are red or tan. So again, just hitting these, pulling out these edges on the gold and silver areas. Yeah, like even through here just to brighten up some of the top of the cylinders. From here we're going to highlight our black which means we're going to use some more of this Space Wolf looking blue. And any of the fabric here is going to mix this with the black to get a very, very dark, dark, dark blue. And these will be, this will be the highlight color. So you want it to be fairly visible, but still just kind of blend in one layer. And that blue shift will make sure that the black parts kind of stand out against the red. So broad highlights on these big areas and then in the folds hitting those high edges. Hoses as well so these kind of ribbed hoses you can almost dry brush or just slide along the surface. And the flat hoses I usually just hit one side if it's visible from one side if it's visible from both I'll put a highlight on both sides. So now that we got our highlights all across our black, I'm going to highlight up the saddle just a little bit. It's not going to be seen very much, but I want to bring up that brown just for my sake. Add some edges to it just in case you can see somebody turns the model upside down, starts looking in the cracks. A little bit of a highlight around the lip of the uh, the saddle here, and this was just a mix of uh, the Terran khaki from Reaper, and then the Beastie Brown, which likes to separate all over the place once it gets on the palette. Um, from here, I'm going to take a little bit of pure khaki and just add a few highlights to the skull, just to brighten it up, give it a little bit more interest. And then we need to address edge highlights for the red, um, especially where these little muzzle vents are because that's a really interesting area. For that we're going to take our Kador base red and Kador red highlight, give a little bit of a double shake and add them to our palette. Don't need a lot for edge highlights. I like to go maybe 25%, 30% of the highlight into the red. Make sure I don't have water trapped on my brush. And 
then I'm going to get right here at the base of the vents and just add small highlight just to bring them out. There's some rough angles to attack down here. Trying to miss the gold. Reinforce this one just a little bit. I think that looks a lot better. It's a lot more drastic. That's not them catching the light. That's the actual highlight picking up now. You can add little call like corner highlights, just like edge highlights around the armor just to bring out because they'll sit right next to a shadow. I might add a few of those around here. Um, and then on this guy, we'll need to go in and edge highlight up all these drastic folds of fabric around his neck and on the sleeve. Got a little piece of armor here that can be brightened up. So I'm going to hit all those and then show you the results. So I've gone in and added some edge highlights. These aren't edge highlights, these are the corner highlights. They kind of just help define the shape. Put those normally in shadows next to things. Um, same thing with like the little hand here, you got like a little L here. You'll see those in like Space Marine shoulder pads and stuff in the corners. Um, went in and highlighted here on this guy's shoulder pads. Um, and on the dog horse. Um, see that edge highlight there, these dropping down, and then got the other side of the mask. Um, did a little bit on the bottoms here, just to show some shape, but nothing too extreme. Um, and then a little bit here around this curve where the hose goes in again, just to show the color and the shape at the same time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and glue the rider to the horse. I'm going to scrape in his nether regions here where he makes contact with the saddle get that paint off and then I've already test fitted to see where the contact points are so I'm gonna scrape some paint and then I'm gonna take my CA glue when I find it everybody steals everybody's stuff around here add it to the saddle A healthy, a healthy dollop. And then I know where he kind of sits, respectively. There we go. Nice and snug. I'm going to let that dry, and then we can add some highlights to our tan. We also need to add blue. The only two areas that really need blue, or you know, you could put it, is in the eye slit here and then on the backpack there. All right, so we're gonna highlight up this tan area. If I can find some white that's still wet, there we go. And just kinda on the front of the fold, and then we'll run an edge highlight around the side with the, the last highlight color. Go up in brightness a little bit. I'll need to do this on the other side too. But just run in here, kind of round it out a little bit, and then hit that edge, brighten it up. I gotta show you guys how to do a cog stripe too. All right, we'll do that on the other side and be back. So for this little cog stripe that goes at the bottom of his cloak. I'm going to use a real thin black because thin black comes off the brush a lot easier than thick black. Pick a distance, pull a stripe, kind of refine it as you go and see how far it runs in the picture and then these are pretty small cogs, so we're going to do tick marks and little intervals. I 
and then we're going to connect them. Alright, so we got kind of a rough end, and I'm going to go off camera and refine it. So I've refined this shape, blocked it in a little bit more, I trailed off the end because that is kind of the look. So now he's got this uh, sort of iconic cog pattern on. I'm going to take some of this uh, Signar blue highlight. That's going to be our eye color and our energy color. Which these guys don't have much of, as opposed to some of their more on foot counterparts. Just going to hit that one little piece there. And I'm going to get it down into the cracks too to make it look like it's glowing just a little bit. So, like the bottom edge highlight. There we go. And then for the visor. I'm going to attempt to get it down in here. It's probably not going to show up very well. It shows up pretty good. Again, doing a little bit of a bottom edge high highlight with my application. So again, it looks like it's glowing. Go ahead and hit the other side here. i got to reload my brush. But anyway... Let's highlight it a little bit while I got it focusing well. Let's go toward the center. I'll just brighten it up just a tad. So you can work up or down. If you get something somewhere you don't want it. That gives him a little bit of color in his visor. And then the backpack, go back to it. We'll do a little bottom swoosh. And then we'll get some pure white. We'll do a little dot. Dink. And we got our little quick lens. I'll get this glued together and we'll move on to the base. Time to finish up this guy and get his base done. Quick base, blue, gray, pale dry brush, and a white dry brush over that. Already got those added to my palette. I'm gonna grab one of my dry brushes here. Yeah. Dry brushes from Knights at the Game Table. I think they have those up in their store. And just dry brush in the base going for brighter at the front because it's always better to have a little bit more attention to the front of the model and brighter colors I'll draw us in try not to hit my ferrule too much going under here You'll probably hear it clicking I'm pretty rough with my dry brushes they don't last very long but if you clean them and you're nicer to them than I am it will last a little bit longer. So that's our blue-gray pale. Again, using blue tones in a lot of our blacks because we have a red model. Like, there's a reason that the red will pop more. It's scientific and I don't know it. No, it <laughs> has to do with color balance and the way your brain perceives things. If anyone's interested to these stands, to just put them on with sticky tack. Um, my fiance laser cuts those. See, right there it says lightning and lace. Shameless plugs for Thursday. It's Thursday now. Yesterday was Wednesday. Well, we worked on the majority of this model. <clears throat> Alright, gotta do our black ring here. This looks bad, in my opinion. I think that you need to clean up your models. You need to have that nice presentable look. It's kind of like putting on a suit and tie for your game. You go to a tournament, put on a suit and tie. Be very uncomfortable. I go in sweatpants. Take a bigger synthetic brush to do our base trim. These are always handy to have. Like Go to Michael's or whatever craft store that has cheap brushes in your area get you a bag of 
20 brushes for 10 bucks. I got brushes sitting all over my studio. Thousands. Millions. Should sell them all for 50 cents and be a millionaire. No, I don't need this. I'm not dry brushing. I'm just hitting the ring. I'm in a good mood this morning, finishing up a model, right? The beginning of the morning is a great way to start the day. Feels like I've already done a whole bunch. I got a whole nother one of these to paint, though. And then afterwards, when we're done with this ring, we're going to put on our matte varnish. Which again, the Army Painter anti, not, it's not anti-shine anymore, it's just Army Painter matte varnish. A coat from all sides, quick sprays, you don't need a whole bunch. We'll get you the, uh, the primo turnaround here so you can see all the parts. Get your reference. Below. Alrighty, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you got any questions.